and shiver. All right, so uh, this is a quick tutorial on how to mod Moirai. You're gonna go into your Steam and uh, Steam Apps folder, which it's located there. Um, go into Common, and then here's where all your games are gonna be listed, like all the files. Let's go into Moirai, and uh, this is all the files for the game. Gonna go into Data, and this is the important folder. All these files here are very important. Now I've already got a folder with some stuff in it, some uh, backups from when I did the modding myself. Now these files are definitely something you should back up somewhere. Um, the modded ones, that is, not the originals, because the originals you can just verify with Steam Cache, and since the game's so small, it's very easy. If you go into Font, you have to change the name of the font to that listed there in the files. Otherwise it won't work because the game's not designed to load anything but that specific font there and it has to be a true type font file. In levels you've got all these different files for each of the areas of the game. You don't want to edit anything at all in here, any of the images that is, uh, because that could really mess up your game seriously. And uh, even in the XML, which is where you edit what people's names look like, what items' names look like, etc., you still want to keep an eye on what you're editing, because uh, going in here, you can see all this code, which is like, you could really mess up stuff. If you go and mess with things like the sprite name right above where I selected, uh, that could really mess up the stuff, although if it says text equals and then quotation marks, you can mess with that all you want inside the quotation marks. Uh, at least I think you should be able to, that's what I did, but I changed the name to Metaton from previous player, or something along those lines, and uh, I basically changed it to what it is now. And as long as you only edit the things that say text equals, etc., then you should be good, as long as you don't mess with anything else, unless you know what you're doing with those other things. Now, in uh, music, you're gonna see these two files here, cave OGG and village2.ogg and um, you're gonna wanna make sure that the files you put in here are .ogg and they have the names, like if you want the cave music to re be replaced with something call it cave.ogg and village2, the same thing I replaced it with uh, Too Far from Undertale and um, Snowden Town's theme the normal version of Snowden Town's theme, not the slowed down genocide version and again, like earlier with the like the um, the other if, like files and stuff, you want to leave these names as they are, or if you're going to be changing the files, change the names to these names of those other files, because otherwise the game won't work properly. It won't load them. It'll be all like, hey, there's nothing here. We can't load it because it's not what I was told to load in the code. Hey, that's a rhyme. In sound effects. There's a lot of things in here. Uh, you can change really whatever you want. Um, I left most of the default sounds the same because, to be honest, they're pretty good for what they're being used for. I replaced, I think, Crying and Stab Pierce with uh, Undertale attack sounds. Uh, whenever like you see the little pinkish red slash go through the air, that sound. Um, because it just sounded better in the Undertale sort of vibe to me than the default ones and crying because of course it's the the dying lady slash burger pants <laughs> um and here is the main editing i did changing out images like axeman axeman 2 and you can see axeman tf2 style in there that was from an error i had i just had to mess around with some stuff although if you follow the rules I've sort of laid down, there shouldn't be any. Just leave the file names as they are while changing the content of them. Um, and of course, if you want to leave them there just as like a template or something, like you want to change them around only a little, you can of course back them up or keep them or something like that. And based off the size of the characters, you'll want to black out bits of the background, whatever's remaining of the original image, uh, in a solid black. And then on the different characters, you're going to want to go around, if there's any black on them, you're going to re want to replace it with something a little bit lighter. Uh, like in Paint.net, you can increase it by like 6% or like 0.6%, something like that, like a very tiny amount. 
but that makes a difference because the game is only told to get rid of the black, like the stuff that's 100% black. That's just the solid, well, black, of course. Um, and I, I realize at this point that I could have replaced Burger Pants with the genocide injured Toriel, but I already had her included as a different character, so continuity. It's really important, you know, really important. And I was also thinking of taking uh, Ezreal to replace the sheep, but he fit better with the little boy underscore red or just boy red because he fits with the mom. Um, and then I also replaced the lantern with a button that you can't really read what it says because it's so small, but it turns into item. And then we've got a fight and then bloody fight button for the knife because... You know, they don't actually ever really show much of a knife in Undertale besides the, the toy knife laying on the ground out by uh, Toriel's tree. And uh, basically, I took the uh, the small sprites, like the world model, I guess, not really world model, but like the world sprites, not the battle sequence ones, because the battle sequence ones would have been too big, too high def to actually fit into these smaller Moirai things. And as you can see here, I'm using Gaster as an example. You can... If I well, when I zoom in, that is, uh, you can really see the difference in color. Like the black is actually a different shade, slightly lighter than uh, the background, because the game will delete anything that's the color of the background. But of course, it'll leave the things that are like you know slightly brighter. And in the actual mod video, I had a slight error where I forgot to change the color of Fisk's eyes and mouth, so they were transparent. And as soon as I noticed that, I quickly tried to move out of the house as fast as possible because it was like, oh no, I've made an error. I can't let them see this. I'll never live it down. <laughs> but uh, as you can see, the axe man there, uh, he, I just used him as a rough template. Uh, different characters of different sizes, of course, will have different amounts and areas of the original character sticking out. If you just decide to drag and drop, I found that to be easiest. Someone like Asgore would almost completely cover him, if not completely. But someone like Sans, who actually ended up replacing him, would have a harder time. You'd have to erase some of the background. Um, along with most of the characters here, to be honest. Because they're generally smaller than the characters from Moirai. All right, so now we've got all these files here that we've modified in some way. Um, so we, what you're gonna do, you wanna go over to the Moirai data folder. You see all the, the folders there, and if you've copied them out, it should be the same names, otherwise change them to that. You wanna click them and drag them on over, drop them in there, and then hit replace files and destination. That's completely fine. Um, if you followed the, the rules I set correctly, the game should work, as I'll show in just a second. There you see, it's all loaded up. It says Moirai, but you can see Toriel, Asgore, you know, all those people. But that's basically how you mod Moirai. Pretty simple, to uh, to be honest. But uh, I hope this helped you uh, in any ways that it could. And uh, if you liked, please leave a like. Consider subscribing. It really helps me out. And um, if you want to see me do anything else, just comment it below. Games, tutorials, anything at all. But... I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time. See ya!